G'day all, how you going? It's Mike here from Orchard Craft, uh, our little block of land where we are suddenly trying to turn our, our acre of land into something productive and useful. So part of that we're clearing out some of the old crops we've had and we've got these little beauties right here. They're carrots as you can see. Uh, we planted these over COVID, so the middle of our winter. Some really nice sized carrots in there. There's some quite a bit small so Though the kids will chomp through these in no time flat if I let them, I'm thinking to myself, what can we do? What can we do to turn these carrots into something a little more interesting? Now the name Orchard Craft is because we're not only a market garden orchard selling fruit and vegetables to the public and eggs and various other things, but we also make and sell crafts. Uh, a bit of metalwork, copper and iron mostly. And the other thing... Though I can't sell it, comes in awfully handy to trade for other things, and you'd be amazed what the barter system can get you, is making and selling things like wines, beers, spirits. I'm going to turn some of these carrots into carrot wine. <laughs> <laughs> I know! You're all sitting there thinking, what the... F he's lost his marbles! Um... I'm going to try on this channel to make as many different strange and weird wines that you would never make yourself, that you would never think to make, because frankly, probably, <laughs> it tastes bloody awful. <laughs> and you don't want to spend six months a year making a wine just to uncork it in front of friends and family to find out that it tastes like cat's urine. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to post the results on here. And this is the first one we're doing. We are doing carrot wine. <laughs> so I'm just topping and tailing these. Not peeling them. Uh, mostly because not all of them obviously are going to go into the wine. But also because um, a lot of the flavour is actually in the skin. What we did was we chopped up the carrots into small pieces. We didn't grate them up. Um, I'm following a recipe I found off the internet. I can't find my copy of CJG Berry's Country Wines and How to Make Them, which I've owned for 40 years. And of course it's disappeared the moment I wanted to use it. Never mind. I found one that looked very similar in his kind of style of winemaking. I thought I'd give that a crack because I'm a big fan of his blueberry wine. Um, and his peach wine wasn't too bad either. In fact, I think that might be how I ended up married. Anyway, so we chop them up and we boil these carrots, bring them to a boil, and then we allow them to simmer. And I simmered them here for a good 20 minutes. You want to get as much of that flavour out of these. And it's a root vegetable. It's not like a fruit. It's not going to just give up its flavour. And I still worry that I didn't boil them long enough. It might have been best to put these in the crock pot and boil them overnight on a slow cook. Apparently the big danger is that if you boil these too much, too long, they go soft, they go soggy. Um, what you'll end up with is a, 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 a haze of something in the wine that you can't get rid of. So not a pectin haze, um, pectin haze but something else and I have no idea what that is apparently so I thought well we'll try and avoid it and you know rather than try and problem solve so we'll take advice of other people um, who've apparently made this before who knows they may not know what they're talking about I guess we're going to find out one way to find out isn't it okay so we're quite simply from here on and we strained the carrots juice through a serving into the jug and then poured that over a kilo of sugar that we'd already put into the Demijohn into the sterilized Demijohn and added the other ingredients. So I've got ready to add the other ingredients. Okay, so some of the next things we need to add, juice of two uh, lemons plus the zest apparently. Never added a lemon zest to a wine before, should be interesting. And a cup of sultanas because it does add 
body to the wine, gives it a more uh, viscous, um, you know, stick to the glass look and a better mouthfeel. Oh, um, one quick note, I want to make, mention this now. Um, you cannot take a specific gravity off this right now for two reasons. I mean, first of all, we haven't added all the water, but even if we had all the water, the temperature is not optimal. All right, so here we are with the product. I'm just letting it do its primary ferment. Uh, hence why I've left that huge gap at the top there. Normally I'd have it chopped full. Um, as you can see with my mead, which is coming to the end of its uh, cycle. Beautiful dark colour of that mead, eh? That's my honey. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, there's a, a clear zone at the bottom. And the sultanas are sitting at the top and the bottom and they're going up and down like little bees, as you might might notice. Um, uh, but it's not the colour I thought it might be. I'm really quite interested to see how this is going to do. I'm thinking I'm going to top this up when I top it up after it's done its primary, you know, big food. I was worried it was going to bubble through the airlock. Um, I'll top it up with carrot juice. Um, just because I, I'm a bit worried it's not going to have any kind of carrot influence in there whatsoever. Um, anyway, as you can see, one of them going down now. Um, yeah, I, I'll check back with you in a wee bit and let you know how it goes.